afternoon, everybody. Hope you all awake after this good lunch. So, we're talking about the recycling of agricultural film without using water. Um, and by the way, we are not a producer of products, we sell the equipment to do so. Um, this presentation is <clears throat> about the dry cleaning process predominantly that can be used for agricultural film. We call this concept the one-step solution for plastic recycling. And the company, in fact, the three, the three E's actually stands for the words environmental engineering and equipment. So this is the uh, dry cleaning technology. Uh, it's produced by a company, Maas, out of Austria. And this technology can be used in different applications. It can be used as a standalone dry cleaning system, as a complete washing without water system uh, to clean up materials like flower pots, agricultural trays, uh, egg film, greenhouse film, and similar items to then be downstream densified, agglomerated, repelletized, and recompounded. It is also used in a conventional wet wash line as the final drying and cleaning process with the added benefit of removing the final dirt from the washed film. This is particularly interesting in applications of washing stretch film like hay bale wrap and similar items. This slide actually shows the working principle of this machine. Um, the material has to be prepared with shredding, pre-screening, possibly optical sortation, manual sortation to get a clean stream of material into this machine. For this machine, in order to work properly, the material has to be pre-shredded to two inch lines. We heard already presentations about shredders, so we're not going to get into that today. The mixed flake with the dirt contaminant as well as chemical contaminants are represented by three different dots. The blue represents the material. The yellow or greenish represents the dirt. And black dots represent heavy contaminants. This could be items like chopped up wires, small pieces of gravel, uh, things like that. Nature. The material will all then be sucked into the centrifuge Heavy parts have fallen out of the heavy trap at the bottom of the machine and the mix of dirty plastic with the and moisture goes into the centrifuge. It's held in suspension inside the centrifuge for a certain batch time and this batch time is adjusted according to moisture level and dirt contamination. The principle here is we are bringing in heated air into the stream to dry off the moisture first. That suspends the dirt into the actual centrifuge. And to remove the dirt we have on the outside of the centrifuge, we use screens. And we suck continuously through the screens to a back out to separate the dust from the air. So at the end of the cycle, the blue dots are moved on to the downstream. The yellow dots are gone to the back out we have a clean film. We spoke about the single application or the final application. If we have a dirty material like agricultural film, we typically do this in a double step. The first and main cleaning happens in the first centrifuge with heat. <clears throat> Once this material is dry, 95% of the dirt is removed, it goes into a secondary centrifuge and is exposed to another cycle time that's equal to the first cycle time to just get additional friction washing. All of the dirt is sucked into one either cycle or back house. In a dirty application like agricultural film, a cycle separation is typically not enough 
then we want to have a back bounce. And this is what the two-step process looks like. In this case, with a uh, cyclonic separation in the back house, the back house will just replace the cyclones on the right side. If the equipment is used after a wash line for final cleaning or stretch film, we only need the drying effect plus some of the cleaning, so we can do it in one step. So the material would come from a screw press or something that has pre-dried the material down to about 20%. We go into centrifuge, we dry the material down to about 1.5%, one, one and we have the added benefit of removing any other remaining dirt contaminants out of the washed field. what the single stuff looks like. There's about three different sizes available in single or double stage and they are always measured in input capacity, not in output capacity. The output capacity depends on moisture level and dirt contamination. So if we are speaking about 20% moisture and 30% dirt, of what is listed here with 500 kilograms, you would produce about 250 kilograms of clean flake. Or 1,000 kilos turns into about 500 kilos of clean flake. Or up to 1,500 of the big line, which gives you about 750 kilograms. Here are a couple of pictures, and you will be able to see some of these samples in our booths, number 15, in the exhibit hall. This is on the left side a picture of dirty mulch film, on the right side a clean mulch film. Here an industrial film, left side dirty film, right side clean film. Here's another good example for something that's very hard to watch, um, which goes away from the agricultural material, in this case it's cement bags. Big bags have often things like the cement as well. Cement is very hard to wash because it cures under water. So we can actually get the cement residual out of the PP material and separate it out. So this is the, the left picture shows the cement bag as they come, shred it. On the left side, the clean flake. On the right side, what comes out through the screens. This is 90 plus percent cement. There are small residual pieces of plastic cement that have gone through the screen. Artificial turf, <clears throat> another uh, material that is very easy to clean with this machine. And on this picture, I just want to give you an idea these two jars represent the before and after. The left jar is the dirty turf in a liquid. And you can see it's a murky water. On the right side, it's after the dry processing. There's no sediments in the water anymore, which means it's clean. So in summary, the advantage of the system is that, of course, you do not have to deal with any water permits. You have no water cost. It's fairly easy to maintain. Very energy efficient. You have reduced disposal costs because you don't have to get disposed of any wet dirt. Everything that comes out of this machine is dry dirt. So all the water is evaporated. Very simple operation and an increased quality on film that has been washed. Now, there's also things to say about this machine. It cannot completely replace wet wash for certain applications. If you're looking to make a very thin gauge film from recycled material, you certainly have to wash in combination with dry cleaning. But for many applications that are going into injection molding, Extrusion, the cleaning process of the dry cleaner is plenty good enough.
on the plot. Um, there's also been a question before about paper residual or organic residual that come with the film. We don't separate the paper out with the centrifuge. It stays in the stream. That is something that will be removed in the downstream equipment in form of melt filtration in a recompounding line. And we offer a co-rotating conical recompounding line. And in that line, we would add a continuous melt filtration. And in this continuous melt filtration, I'm not going to talk much about extruders because I know there's another two or three presentations in that arena coming. But on the continuous melt filtration, um, we can live with up to 5% soft contaminants. So paper residuals, organic matter, it always comes with the film, can be removed afterwards. Same as aluminum, but that doesn't really apply much to the agricultural film. The way this technology works is we have a steel plate that's perforated to the desired melt filtration. The melt is going in and is distributed over the screen, and this screen rotates. So any paper residuals, organic matter, will get caught by the screen and it will be immediately lifted off the screen by a scraper. And that scraper puts it onto a discharge auger. So you have a continuous flow coming out of this machine. The huge advantage of this technology is that you can run multiple hundred tons of material to the screen before you have to change it. The screen itself, since it's a steel plate, can be reclaimed numerous times and reused. So you look at four, five, six hundred tons of material that can run through one screen. Always depending on the material, of course, and the contamination level. So, <clears throat> in summary, you can, with this technology, you can recycle any component and watch that. You can also reprocess very heavily printed PO with paper labels, polyolefins. There's another effect of this, it's called no side feeders if you're pounding up with your conical co-rotating extruder allows to feed various different components into the feed stroke without use of side feeders. The continuous filtration allows you up to 5% soft contaminants. We offer a triple the gas in the cascade extrusion, which means we will actually be gas off the mill filtration twice. This in summary gives you a huge energy saving, a fairly small footprint, low energy consumption per kilogram or per pound, very reduced polymer loss with the filtration since there's no back flushing, and the reuse of the screens is three to five times. There's different sizes of extruders, we don't have to go much into it. But it ranges from anywhere from 350 or 750 pounds to about uh, 4,000 pounds an hour in capacity. This would be a complete system that we could provide that is a double stage parallel dry cleaning system that can handle about 4 to 5,000 pounds of input. And then a recompounding line with melt filtration. So you can produce about 3,000 to 3,500 pounds an hour. What is very important, as I said in the beginning of my presentation, is that the material is prepared properly for the dry cleaning process. The next slide here shows you a front-end processing that is not necessarily matching up exactly with the slide before from its capacity. But what we would recommend is a form of a pre-shred so that you can deliberate a lot of the dirt particles, the rocks, and organic matter out of the film to a size.
size of about six or eight inch miners. <clears throat> and you can feed entire bales with wires into this type of equipment. Follow it with a magnetic separation to take any ferrous metal out. Screen it to take out any loose dirt that you have already produced through the first shred. And finally, before you go into the final shred, use a wind sifting technology to separate any of the heavy contaminants out. We have one customer is using this uh, wind sifting technology in the Arcfield recycling line on about 16,000 pounds of material they pulled out 800 pounds of heavy contaminants, which is rocks, predominantly, but also big stems, big pieces of wood, and metal. So that was kind of my short presentation. Um, again, the equipment we offered was basically from A to Z, from pre-shredding and plant-based or mobile equipment, single or double deck screening, wind sifting, secondary shredding, granulating, dry cleaning, recompounding lines with smell filtration, or aggregate, or anything else that's inside for the recycling of plastic, whether it's industrial, related, or waste. Thank you for your attention. <coughs>